Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first round of the League of Legends Teemo Cup. I'm Bell, and joining me casting today is your co-host, Nathan. Yes, um, yes. Today's match is going to be between the Tarleton Texan Esports and Austin College out of Sherman, Texas. Uh, this is going to be a best of three match today. I don't know about you, Nathan, um, but I personally would love to see a full three rounds played today. What do you think? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. No matter who wins uh, here, I'm hoping for just two games. The D&D movie came out tonight, and honestly, I'm trying to watch that. Not too oh, late. Oh, no, the priorities. <laughs> but if we do get a best of three... If we do get uh, the full three games, it'll be an exciting watch. Our team's been working really hard. I do want to remind people that um, the stream is in a three-minute delay. And on top of that, the spectating will also be in a three-minute delay. So it'll be a total of six minutes in delay for anybody watching. Unfortunately, we did have to follow the guidelines of uh, the whole streaming thing for the Teemo Cup. Uh, keep it fair for everyone for both teams. Um, we're expecting great things from both teams. Both teams have been working hard, I feel like. Um, I'm honestly very excited to see what's going on. Yep, we uh, have both teams have joined now. We're just waiting for the drafting phase to start so we can get that uh, we can get that going for you. Teams do seem to be ready. Waiting for Pow Pow to start the game. Yep, so uh, this Teemo Cup, this is the first round. This is a single elimination tournament that lasts for three weeks. So basically what's going to happen is the winner of today gets to go on to the next round, but whichever team loses today does not get to continue in the tournament. So we are... We're really, we're really hoping for this today, so we can come back again next week for y'all. It's cutthroat, but I, but I honestly, like I said, we've been working real hard. I think uh, this will be a tough game. We're definitely gonna give uh, Austin College a run for their money, or their RP. And it, as a uh, Mizra just said in chat. They have elected to go pro draft this time instead of the normal turn tournament draft. Um, are you able to click on that link so we can see what their drafting is, what they're doing? This one right here? Should be. All right. Move it over. I'm not going to full screen it, by the way. Yep. All right, switch it over. Here we go. A little bit of a weird way of drafting things. I'll make it bigger for y'all so you can see it. Um, I can't see it on my end over here yet. Apologies. Let's do screen one for you, Bill, just for now. How about now? All right. Yes, I can see what's going on now. Looks like they are already a little deep into the draft here. Kind of sad that we didn't get to talk about it first. Um, so we decided to ban Ezreal, Jarvan, and Vigar, and their first three were Yumi, Varus, Jinx. Looks like they're really mm -hmm. focusing our bot lane here. Um, I really like the Jarvan ban from the side of TSU. Looking at their... The most played on the sides of Austin College. I was really already expecting uh, Jarvan to be pick or banned for this game. Their jungler, um, high diamond, Jarvan main with an 80% win rate and ranked. And the, the character is just so overpowered on this patch right now. I really think banning that, um, really good option here, really good idea. A uh, little, little fun that's going on here. We picked Melio for our support on our side. It's the new support that was just added to the game for those... Y'all that don't play it, so it's really cool to get to see them drafted here. We also have Siver and Annie, so we have our bot in mid lane in. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. For the side of Austin College, they went ahead and drafted Senna, 
and they have Cho'Gath and Azir. Now, this is really interesting. Their mid laner is an Azir main. This is their absolute main character. No big surprise that they're picking this. Um, what I'm interested in is the the Senna and the Cho'Gath, because there's a few ways that this could go. They could do the, the Cho'Gath top lane, which is normal. But since they locked in Senna, there's there's also potential for uh for for a little shenanigans here with the Cho'Gath Senna bot lane. It sure, has sure. been played in in professional play this season. Uh, it's but honestly, really fun to see that happen. Uh, last bands going through here, we have we bland we banned Vladimir, and they took out a uh, Nunu and Maokai. Miz, our jungler, is a Nunu main. Really smart for them to take that away from him, I see. Yep, yep, yep. We I do gotta say, yep. I do gotta say, I am surprised about the Melio pick. Cascas has been working really hard on it, um, pretty much nonstop. Any game that I've played with her, it's been pretty much her playing Milio. I'm excited to see it, just like everyone else's. Uh, but I do gotta say, it is a new character, and it has been a nonstop pick for everyone. So I feel like could be a problem or it could be a good asset Ooh, fun here we have viego locked in for the side of austin college and we lock in trundle to counter the viego no surprise that's something miz really likes to do shut down viego mains it is really just almost impossible for a viego to play against the trundle and then we lock in orn for our our top laner now is where we get to see the the truth uncovered. Is this going to be a, a Cho'Gath ADC or is this going to be a Cho'Gath top lane? Oh, it's the Jace it's, pick. It's going to be the Cho'Gath ADC from the looks of it. We're going to have a Jace locked in. It seems to be the comfort pick of the Austin College top laner. This is looking to be a really exciting game here. I'm closing. All right. I'm excited, honestly. Uh, let me... Do you want you probably want audio bell, right? No, that's it. all right. Okay. Honestly, I'm really excited. Uh the Jace pick. I've been playing a lot of Jace recently. Um I'm excited to see what uh, Austin College does here. Yeah, so basically what's happening now that they use the the pro drafting tool to determine who they're actually gonna play. Um, and now they're basically just running back over the same exact what just happened in in the in the league client. <laughs> so we're not going to see anything new here. It's just going to be exactly what was just banned and what was just picked. And then we'll have just... our three minutes to talk about everything just to review it before <laughs> the before the game starts. Yes, yes, yes. Unlucky. So uh, what we're do you think about the Cho'Gath Senna bot lane for the side of Austin College? I hate it. I hate it. I'm 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 normally play jungle. Uh, I started playing a uh, top lane, um, but the one time I jungled against that type of bot lane, it's been the most toxic thing I've ever gone against. Um, just the, the pure tankiness and Senna keeping him alive, and not only that, him being strong by himself too. It's it's an incredible bot lane pick. Um, and I'm excited to see it, see more of it. I'm just never excited to play against it. So we'll Very see what true. they're cooking here. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of nervous. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, it's a really For... cheeky pick here. I'm also interested to see who they have on which character. Um, the one thing that does kind of surprise me about this is that uh, usually when you run this setup, it's the Senna support, Shogath ADC, and you go uh, basically Starving Senna or Fasting Senna is what it's called um, because she gets her passive, she gets the souls off of minions that die that are that are killed by her allies while she's nearby. Um, she will get souls off of minions that she kills, but they spawn at a much lower rate, which mm -hmm. is why when you do this, you have Senna as support and you have the Cho'Gath farming so that she gets her souls. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see what they do here because their ADC is, a, is, is the diamond player. Their ADC is one of the two highest ranked players in their team, their ADC and their jungler. So you would think that you would want the ADC to be playing Senna? Mm hmm And we have Pao Pao taking the severe pick. I love seeing Pao Pao's uh, severe. It's a... Uh, but I will say, I haven't seen this combo of his severe and Cascas's Milio. So 
I'm expecting it's... it to be really oppressive. Um, mm -hmm. I'm expecting that once we hit level two, level three, that Cho'Gath's not going to be able to walk up anymore. With the Melio W and the Cyber Ricochets be constantly bullying them off the wave, shoving in, creating pressure. And Miz is just really looking to play into Viego everywhere that he can. Um, I would expect some some aggressive okay. jungling. It looks like we will also be on the left side, or er, uh, left side right now. I went ahead and switched that. See in the chat, Parker's excited about the Jace pick. Yep, yep. All right, now that we have this grueling three minutes of waiting, um. I do want to say now that uh, I'm actually surprised they chose to ban Jarvan here instead of maybe like first picking him. Um, just because uh, either they could have A, first picked him, or uh, B, maybe countered him. Uh, Miz is playing Jin Zhao, so I feel like that's a big, as Bell told me before, that that's a Bell, big uh, counter against uh, Jarvan. And I don't know if maybe personally I would have done that. Maybe I'm thinking the wrong idea, but I think I, I can it see been. where you're coming in with that. Yes, um, I I do think that I like just taking just taking the Jarvan off the board in totality here, though. Um, okay. While while Miz does play it, Miz plays pretty much every jungler out there. I think that they're going to be more comfortable on the Chundle than they would be on the Jarvan. Um, and and so just taking it away, and especially it, it created the scenario where. They Austin College did pick Viego, which allowed um, Misera to be able to counterpick them so strongly. Is this a Viego? Uh, like, it, does how does how does Viego fare against this matchup? I said it is practically unplayable. I can I can get stats for you here in a little bit, <laughs> but uh, Trundle with the with the life steal on his on his ultimate just makes it to where Viego cannot play the game. You cannot run away yeah. from Trundle. Um, you just get locked down and keeps you from keeps you from doing anything, especially now that they have the the Melio for the counter engage, um, and Annie the, the point and click stun when she has her passive fully stacked. She just uses that on whichever is the strongest on their team, lock them down, get them out of the fight. Um, it's gonna be interesting. It, it's definitely a like a poke comp for the side of. Austin College, from the looks of it, with Jace and Azir. Um, really mm -hmm. interesting to see how this plays out. I, I honestly, I like the comp for TSU a, a lot nice. more in this scenario. I feel like, but we, we will see how the the Senna Chogath bot lane plays out. Like I was saying, I, I'm just so excited for that. I know I keep repeating myself on it. Um, honestly, yeah, I'll, I'll say that I do like our TSU team better, but I think. I'm gonna be watching more of the bot lane from Aveline or not Aveline, Austin uh, College here. Because it's I think bot lane is gonna be where it's at most of the time. Oh yeah. They do have a the one big advantage to the Chogath Senna is just how hard they scale into the late game. With the mm -hmm. Senna getting the range and the AD and crit off of her passive, um Chogath getting infinitely tanky with the fee stacks. Right, it closed. I'll have to open it back up for you. Can you see it, Bill? All good? Yep, I am back here. Sounds good. I will say, um, we do have technically just me um, controlling the whole game camera and everything like that. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, they only allowed one spectator for this, so I'll try my best. Um, I'll open some... Looks like they might try to go for an invade here on the TSU. A little cheeky coming here through bot lane. Mm -hmm. Walk down the bottom of the river. This is something that Miseral really likes to do. Very aggressive jungler. Um, I did find the stats for you that you were asking for. Viego has a 45% win rate going into Trundle. 
starting strong by taking out that flash from uh, Cho'Goth. Might be looking to either ward it or just completely take their blue. On the side, we also have uh, Diego possibly taking TSU's blue. Now there's a ward down. Looks like both teams are going to go ahead and back away to their own jungle. Mm -hmm. TSU actually rotating back top. Misera probably possibly sniffing out the the invade on the Viego. Maybe thinking that they're gonna stay up there and try to take it. Idea. But unfortunately they do know where Miz could be coming from, that being the ward there. Looks like Jace was also looking for an early cheese in top lane, was sitting in that bush. C is going to be a little late getting to lane here. He definitely was playing it safe. I have not here. Some action happening here in bot. Looking at their items, they did go the Senna support, but they do have their ADC player on Senna. It's true. You can see already how oppressive that Senna Shogath can be. So much peel for her while she does all the damage. She good poke from both teams, honestly. And it looks like both teams junglers have just noticed just as well as we have we have how much this game is gonna revolve around the bot lane. Both of them deciding to start in the top jungle, pathing towards bot. Really thinking that's gonna be the focus of this game. Miz starting red. Um, that a Raptors here. Maybe he's going to see if he can try to gank there earlier. Potentially a three camp, yeah, trying to get in as fast as possible. Looks like he's coming from the back side here. Could be a good gank. See if they can find anything. Remember, Cho'Gath has no flash, so they're probably looking for Cho'Gath. There's the exhaust. Emilio slow. First blood over to Pow Pow on Sivir. Yeah, that's pretty big for TSU considering he is our uh, one of our best on the team. Diego picking up that uh, Emilio kill. Could take out Pow Pow here. Miz playing the defensive on him. So it does end up being a one for one here. Mm -hmm. I do say, I will say though that getting that first blood for TSU was pretty big. Um, Definitely agree with you on that. Okay, he's doing so a lot of no damage No sums here. bot lane for Austin College. Diego looking to possibly gank Ballard here. Could be a good gank. In fact, he does have flash, so... It... Stun misses. Okay, Azir jungle. looking really low on mana right now. Now, Azir got reworked about two patches ago, and one of the changes that was made was to take strength away from his early game, push up to late. little action going on here in the bot river. Viego does make it out. Yep. Azir unfortunately had to call back there, so he couldn't help Viego here, and with no mana, so... Azir so TPs back to lane. Looking for some poke here in bot lane. Diego, Diego looks coming like he's coming again. down. Yeah. Could be getting a gank here. Yeah, this could be really bad for the side of TSU. We do have both flashes ready. They're probably going to be used. Knock up. Pow oh. pow flash. Potentially a little late. Fortunate. Both kills oh, is a on double TSU. Over to TSU. Uh, Miz, Miz picking up one kill. Trade one back. Yes. This could be something. A good play. Hope to Valorant and see if they can pick something up here. Good flash. Good kill for Miz. Viego trying to run down Annie. Doesn't Good. quite make it. Good shutdown on Miz. Let's see what's happening top lane real quick. And there you get to see why Trundle is just so strong into Viego. <laughs> Honestly. Not much happening here top lane. Um, Disease here is playing a little bit weaker. Uh, trying not to die.
see what's happening. Look like uh, Annie might be going Luden Ted to uh, Ludens here. Is that possible here? Um, so far, she just has the lost chapter, though I think Ludens could potentially be an option. Um, typically, you do look for early injuries. A lot happening here in top lane. Smoke. Mid lane with a lot of action. This Viego really finding good ganks so far. Honestly, Tipper's being annoying, though. Definitely, uh... Allowing uh, Valor to walk away while also giving some damage to Viego. Even though Viego has managed to find some really good ganks so far this game, Miz has been there to shut down each and every one. Just really good example of counter jungling here. And there now he goes, the straight over to the dragon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to try to secure some objectives. This should be a free objective. We have so, a little bit of bot prio, uh, some mid prio, and the jungler was dead. This is uh, Miz's playstyle. Really oh, does like could to be, be focused a... on objectives. Potential outplay here from the Orn, and he makes it out. Huge play. Honestly, a good play by uh, Disease here. Um, definitely playing safe enough to be in tower. Honestly, um, if he didn't have flash there, I do think he probably would have been dead. Um, but good flash by Disease. Good flash, good orn horn. Just absolutely well played to survive the tower dive and get a kill. Right now we're in a stalemate. One objective up being Rift Herald. Uh, it looks like Miz might. He could either go for attempt another bot gank here, or he could uh, start rotating upwards. Uh, it secures Harold, but it does look like Viego's gonna try to secure it first. Yep, some more action going on top lane here. Be a kill on either side. Miz with another one, 5 and 0 oh right now. Honestly, this trundle being fed is Viego's worst nightmare. Honestly, it does look like, though, that Viego is going to be taking his camp here. Might try to do a dive on Disease here. I mean, do not doubt it. Miz and the trundle responding by counter jungling Viego's bot side. Suspects that his top side is already missing. Looks like I was wrong about the uh, dive here. Oh, looks like he's trying to trail up here. Are you? No, Deceased does have a pink ward down in that bush, so he can see this coming. I will say he does have ult, I think, Viego. Viego potentially being too aggressive here, not with the with the wave not shoved up yet. Harold there, Deceased attempting a recall. Oh, getting a little too low. There's no way to avoid yeah. now. Trundle coming up though, maybe he can stop them from getting this tower, it'd be close. Or he can just pick up these two kills. Does have to it's be true. careful here, doesn't want to give a shutdown over. That is true. No ultimate. Oh, Manages to get to Viego, no but Jace gets the shutdown and first tower gold goes over to the side of Austin. College. Valor's gonna come up to see if he can collect this kill. Let's see if he sees him in the bush. Has Tibbers available. Gets absolutely one shot by the Jace. That character is broken. Out just to ensure. Valor being unfortunately surprised about just how much damage he did. And I'm surprised too. Jace is only one, uh, just one, one, zero at this point, And with very little items. All he has is Doran's shield. I'm surprised he did as much damage as he did. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong person, I'm sorry. Uh, he had just now bought Eclipse, but he didn't have as much damage as I think he would one-shot anyway. That is the first mythic of the game. The Eclipse onto Jace. He's just an unfortunate shutdown. 
See if he can do a lot of damage here. Diego's coming down. Smashing here and happening in bot safe fall lane. You could pick up a kill here. You have a lot of movement speed. Really close. Hophal makes it out, has the burn flash. Oh, Jay's coming down from top lane, which is a big surprise. Now that he doesn't have top tower, he doesn't really need to be up there anymore. See how much damage that EQ does? Almost wow. deletes Cascas in one hit. That is a killing spree over to the Jace. Diego sniffs out the Annie on the side. Yeah, they'll be looking for a dive, definitely. Potential overstay here. Pow Pow gets the shutdown on Jace. Potentially looking for more. Could be a big shutdown. Oh, Diego. walking down the Cho'Gath. Diego looking for the recess, doesn't quite get it in the Hollowed Mist. Pow Pow searching for the Diego. Fortunately, he's gone. Doesn't find him. Coming back to bot lane, gets hit by the Senna W. Q goes good wide. Dodge. A good dodge from uh, the Cho'Gath there. Definitely for that uh, Severe's ability that would have hit him. They'd have been 100% dead. A Austin College's bot lane making it out on just a sliver of health. Jace looking bot side again, actually. Wants revenge on Pow Pow's Sivir. Yeah, they're definitely looking to probably secure this next dragon. Um, I it think certainly is TSU's possible. TSU's just going to have to give it. Miz really loves focusing around these objectives, but they're going to zone him off from this one. Valord here trying to maybe help stall for TC TSU's bot lane to get back. Bad idea. Jace looks like he's going to just push this tower. If bot team in mid now. And we were already talking about the amount of focus that was going to be on bot lane this game, but honestly, it's it's been even more than we were probably expecting with Jace spending most of the game down here now. See Jace coming from behind, seeing if he gets some sort of pick. Good idea, breaking that blast count so nobody can get in there. Ult from Disease, see if he can pick something up here. Is there kind of being in a misposition place? Um, fortunate. A lot of Azir's strength is going to be in the mid to late game and team fights. We'll say, I think they can get the TCU, could contest this dragon further. Uh, they, they, they picked Miz out, so we have oh, no jungler did. for the smite. Jace sitting on the flanks. This is what Jace is really good at, especially when it's fed, is just sitting behind the team and poking with that empowered Q. Honestly? I'm still new to Jace, so I'm finding out new things with him every single day. So we do Can have we the injuries on Azir, and you were correct, the Luden's built on Annie here. Looking to stop Cho'Gath's back again. Looks like we got the Trundle trying to get this Rift Herald this time. Could be a big Rift Herald. There's objective bounties on um, the towers here. Valor looks like he's gonna. Uh, they're gonna. He's gonna come help as well. Looks like we have full prio on this. Gonna secure it. It's really nice for our team getting that bounty. We might go ahead and just drop this now, get another objective bounty secured on the mid tower, break the mm -hmm. tower, it relieves a lot of pressure on their team. Yep, yep, yep. Azir during... Uh, Ooh, the Azir shuffle! Gets well cast played, cast. honestly. Chogath's Glacial Augment putting in work from the slow. Viego gets Pow Pow, Viego gets another. 
resets coming out in disaster. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, disease just wasn't there in time. Um, his ult doesn't even helpful. look like the tower is going to go down. Viego looking for more here. Gets it. Unfortunately, that is an ace on uh, Austin College's side. Chaos Guys is alive. We actually didn't even get the mid turret here. Survived on one HP and they actually flipped it and got one for themselves. Lucky. Currently a 6k gold lead over to the side of Austin College. That, I will say that was really a surprised smart... by how well the Viego is playing right now. Yeah. I will say that was a good uh, Azir alt. Just making sure that they get Kaz Kaz first. Making sure that they don't have their healer. Somebody that's keeping uh, more shenanigans going on here. Pow Pow with the flash over the wall, really aggressive, taking down the Senna. Diego putting in work. Does he get the reset? He does. Looking for Pow Pow. Uh, Heartbreaker gets him. At this point, the Diego is just really strong right now. It's gonna be a tough time for TSU. I look trying for to run away. One more, absolutely running over this game with Diego right now. Got Jace taking mid. He needs has to make a decision on where he where he wants to protect. We already lost take the top T two, lost the mid T two. Jace potentially overstaying here. Oh, nope, by disease. He misses. It's locked down, taken out. Another shutdown over to Pow Pow. Looking to at least get this turn. Looks like with the pings, from the pings, we could tell that it uh, looks like uh, Austin College is really trying not to lose this turn. And get everybody here protecting they really it. don't want to give up all that pressure they have in mid lane right now. Drag is about to be up, so it's going to be really tough, but it looks like Miz is going to have to give him this. It looks like he will. I really don't see a way we can contest this. Looks like we are going to attempt to trade it for the mid turret, maybe? Nope, didn't, didn't make it in time. Jace hammering away at the bot tier one. Mm -hmm. Looks like he might get it. Jace has really been a strong uh, aggressor. Looks like TSU bot lane gets cut out. It's unfortunate. Azir, There's go ahead the... and dropping the Sh Shamira's legacy. Sharima Le Sharima's legacy words. <laughs> Um, this was one of the things that got reworked, a little Azir turn right here. Might have actually dropped it a little too early. Um, the way the rework has gone, it has gained more health and more resistances. And the cooldown has been lowered from three minutes to only a minute and a half. However, the timer that it survives for has dropped from a minute to only 30 seconds. So that turn's going to go away real fast here, potentially dropped it too early. Yes, it looks like TSU looking pick. for a play. Pow Pow really aggressive. Ricochet going off. Awesome. Yes, Viego and uh, Jace weren't in that fight there. Triple kill looking for... for more. Oh my gosh, the damage coming from the Jace. Can we get an Flash. ace here? We're going to see what happens. Viego looks like he might get away here, unfortunately. Use the Heartbreaker to go over the wall. Jace going to make it out too. Too dangerous to chase him at this point. Diego does take away the red before going. You get recalls from the side of TSU. Going to spend all that gold that we just got. I really like that we got that on uh, Pow Pow Sivir here. I will say, though, we are still really behind in gold. About 10,000 here. 
Um, even with all those shutdowns. This turrets do really hurt. You see a Noon Quiver and a Crit Cloak picked up here for the Sivir. He already has Essence Reaver and Navori Quick Blades. Probably going to go ahead and go crack in this game. Let's take the blue here. Jace has the Muramana completed now. It's, that's a huge damage spike. If he thought he was doing damage with those empowered cues before, just wait to see him with this three item spike with the completed man immune. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Looks like a Hex Drinker is purchased for Viego here, trying to survive that initial Annie burst. Potential skirmish up here in the top river. Yep. Azir does have bolts available. Rage. Potential we'll shuffle coming in. Now just uses it to zone off. Diego could get caught. A good shutdown on Trundle uh, for Trundle. I will say that would have been better if our uh, Severe would have gotten that. But I'm not complaining. It looks like uh, Austin Collins is going to look two, for a Baron. However, though. Yeah. Don't think we can test going. this. The Sea's looking for the Jace here. Ornhorn coming out. A little Not bit of Flash back. Mastery. A bit of banter. Yeah, that is Baron secured. They go ahead and got it with the, the Feast from Cho'Gath. Mm -hmm. And that stacked up that late game tanking is going to start to play a big role. I'll say, I do think it's still winnable. We are not, like, by all any means down on any, like, big amount of kills. But it's going to be really tough for TSU to come back here. Trundle uh, a... looking for the Azir. TP coming in. Mm -hmm. Diego's here, too. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to catch him. Does drop the Shurima's Legacy. Once again, that reduced cooldown on that passive is... So influential there. Normally wouldn't have had it for another full minute. Able to go ahead and drop it. Helps him get out to safety. Austin College being really aggressive, taking out our taking out our jungle, just denying resources from Texan Esports. Got good poke from uh, Jace here, unfortunately. Another TP coming in from Azir. Ult available once more. An amazing Azir ult. There's a double over to the Jace. That Massive damage is insane. Damage. Looking to take this next dragon, denying all dragons for TSU, unfortunately. Getting it right on spawn here. Red team has slain the dragon. Now, one good thing right here for TSU is Orn has hit the level where he can start upgrading everyone's mythics. Has his yeah. own upgraded Jack show now. It's our scaling option that we're looking for. Does Orn usually upgrade his item first before anybody else? Yeah, it, it's a requirement. It's a requirement. Interesting. Auto automatically happens, yes. Yeah, I've never played Orn, so it's new. I'm new to him. A lot happening here. It could be bad if we get picked off here. Jay's doing his damage. An aggressive Orn horn, horn comes out. Another Aldum Zero. Oh, there's the Zanyas from the Jace. Gets taken out by Mizra. However, it is not quite enough. It looks like Austin College is going to look to end here. Yep, and that is going to be it. a really powerful start there from Austin College. Round one going over to them. I'm going to go ahead and get directly into round two. With that, I'm going to go ahead and send it into an intermission so we don't see any code.
All right, and we're back. Yeah, that is end of game one. Really strong turnout by Austin College. One thing I was really surprised we were talking about at the whole beginning, how much focus was going to be in this bot lane. But really, the what decided this game was the the Jace getting super far ahead, impacting the map. And just Viego just playing really well. Absolute masterclass in Viego resets going on. Um, snowballing every team fight. And I'm going to go and stream share this to you. Yeah, we're going to go with Pro Draft again for the drafting phase. Hopefully we get to get in here earlier this time. Yep. Comment as it's happening. Hoping to see a, a really good response this time. Potentially a Jace ban coming from TSU, I would expect, after after the showing that they just had. See if they still ban out the Jarvan. Still waiting to start here. Looks like we're going to wait a little bit uh, before this whole band thing. A really tough game for TSU. Definitely winnable, but uh, just tough. Um, we just got uh, some people picked off worst times. We did play some team fights really well, just positioning wise. Uh, yeah, really aggressive from Pow Pow's Sivir in every fight. However, it it, it kind of felt like we were out macroed. Really, they they were getting turrets mm -hmm. and objectives on opposite sides of the map every time something was happening. Um, for sure, for sure. Showing up for fights at the right time. Azir had some really good ultimates in there. They just kind of. Sure. It went from us being in a good position in a fight to all of a sudden just. Taken by surprise, getting the carries picked. Cannot understress the amount of impact that Azir had once it came to the Honestly. mid game there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do. I'm wondering though. Do could there be a Viego ban here? I wouldn't expect it. It's a possibility, but I would still expect them to go with the Jarvan ban here and potentially just try to counterpick the Viego again. Um, if the game had continued to go on, Trundle would have outscaled. Um, the The jungler for Austin College was just doing a really good job at mm -hmm. avoiding Trundle and getting those resets. I will say... Um... One thing our team is great at doing, bouncing back. I think uh, they got the first game behind them, TSU. Um, I think they're just ready for the next one as we wait All right, right now. So Austin College is jungler. Their name is Kill in Heaven. Um, like I said before, they are a Jarvan main. However, they do play a lot of Viego as well. Uh, top three most played champions, Jarvin, Viego, Sejuani. Um, so not not something new for them, as you saw. They definitely had great mechanics in the last game, great positioning. They are currently Diamond 2, one of the two highest ranked players on Austin College's team. The other one being Cyprian which is their ADC, who actually played Senna last game. Good for them. Good for them. I always like seeing, a, I always like seeing high ELO players uh, play, like Pow Pow. Um, I watched Pow Pow, Pow Pow play many times, um, but I loved watching these uh, games just to see uh, what Pow Pow usually goes against, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, in the comments, we do have you talking about how Jace being able to half HP our bot lane super unfortunate. That is the that is the power of the Fed Jace in the enemy yes. team. Finding those angles out of outside of vision, landing an empowered Q onto the back line. Just really removing agency from the side of TSU in these team fights. Sounds like uh sounds like one character I know that sounds that starts with the heck and then ends with rim. 
Heck no. <laughs> yep. And those of you that we are responding to in the YouTube chat, sorry that it's such a big delay. Like I said, y'all are six minutes behind from what we're seeing. We have the three three minute delay on the on the game, and then another three minutes behind just to just to stay within the regulations of the Timo Cup. Yeah, I mean, um, I would say that, uh, I mean, I, it's hard to say, right? I, 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 I did say before the stream started that I feel like the Jace was going to be super, super strong. Um, I have, I have a feeling I, there could be a ban, um, or perhaps a disease might play a different character. Uh, for safe, surface, sur for safe things, there might be a ban. Uh, I'm not sure. Honestly, can tell you. Yeah, I, I honestly, I would expect it here within the first three. I don't, I don't think they can really afford to give them Jace again. I don't know if we have a good, a good answer to that. Looks like they're returning. As we speak. Jace doing Jace things. That's why he's so cool. Another thing that I was really interested in last game, didn't really bring it up much, was the but but the build that they decided to go with on being a Bork into Divine Sunderer. It's not really his most meta build right now. After the Viego changes, usually it's a Kraken Slayer first item rush. And then we do have we do have the draft finally getting started here. Ezreal, the first ban for TSU again. Cyprian, which is Austin College's ADC, really good Ezreal player. They just don't want to give that to him. Yumi banned away by Austin College. And then we actually t decide to take away the Azir this time. You know we what? It... Th What's that? Sorry, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? You know what? That's not a bad pick, too, because uh, Azir with his alt has been... The, the, almost the entire game of last game uh, was just alting cast cast making sure that she was not with the team so they can pick her off first. It's definitely a good ban in my opinion. I think so. And they, they did go ahead and decide to take away the Jace. Oh, and we're going to first pick the Cho'Gath here, denying them the, the Cho'Gaths in a bot lane. I highly doubt that we're going to try to replicate their bot lane. It's probably going to be a Cho'Gath top. Covering the Senna still. They do decide to keep it. Are they going to run at support this time? Actually, are they going to go fasting Senna again with a different support? Very interested to see. I would expect probably a Jarvan pickup here, maybe from Austin College, since it's not banned away this time. Very, very risky. Oriana instead, chosen for their mid laner. <laughs> Lucian Nami picked up here by the side of TSU. This is not something that I've got to witness them play. I I will say this has to be something that uh Pow Pow and Cascas has been labbing on their own. Sometimes I see them on the Discord just uh playing together, and this has to be one of those things that they're practicing because I've never seen it and I'm actually really excited for it. Now, I would imagine that he is probably picking this specifically into their Senna that they have. Lucian Nami, really strong and impressive early game. Um, really good at snowballing a game once they get that early lead. So I think they're probably trying to counter Austin College's scaling angle with that. We did see the Jarvan picked up by Austin College. No surprise. Um, Nunu banned away. So now we got to see... 
what is TSU's counter going to be to this, Jarvin? What, what is their answer going to be to this now that they've decided to give it over? Is is Miz going to run the Zin Zhao like you were predicting in the first game? Um, Zin Zhao, really strong counter to Jarvin. What else are we going to see? They they once again ban away the Maokai. Austin College's bans looking honest, exactly like they did in the first round. Um, and we do see a lot of similarities on the side of TSU. Um, only real changes are Azir and Jace being banned. Get, deciding to give them the Jarvan this time. Yes, I, it could be a, a Xin Zhao pick here. Um, I'll be excited to see it. A um, little bit of risky. Oh. <laughs> A, little a bit, stat a little... picked up here for Austin College. How are you feeling about that right now? Flustered. That's what I'm feeling right I now. I know you've been playing set all week. I, I know you've played into some Cho'Gaths as set this week. How does that matchup go for you, do you feel like? Honestly, I think it's it could go either way. Um, we do play a little bit of a weaker side. Uh, T, sorry, TSU does play a little bit of a weaker side top. Uh, so... It could be a problem because if Set gets strong, he gets strong, and uh, we definitely don't want some uh, a W one shot on their team for sure. Especially with Jarvin, especially with Jarvin too, with his all and then the Set W. It could be this th their pick, and uh, Austin College's pick could be really strong. See that? Yes, we do see Miz on the Zin Zhao, the Jarvin counter. That's what we were expecting. Valord picking up the Ari for mid lane. Austin College going to answer with a Silas? Interested to see what's going to happen with their bot lane. I'm, I'm not entirely sure which two are going to be bot lane for them. Believe that Valord locked in the, the Ari thinking they were going to be playing into Oriana. If they are going into Silas, it could become a much harder matchup. Silas taking very good advantage of Spirit Rush whenever he takes the hijacks that ultimate. Same thing that happened last time, just replaying um, what just happened in Pro Draft. No surprise is going to come out here. They're just going to go ahead and lock in everything that, that they already just did. And then we're going to have our our three-minute delay that you love so much, Nathan, that we get to talk <laughs> about everything that just happened. Okay. I could talk about Sud all day. Character is so annoying. <laughs> yes, yep. All right, first pick Chogoth. I do like taking that away from them, not giving them their their Chogoths in a bot lane again. But I'm really, I I don't know who who's gonna be their their bot lane right here. Is there a chance that they're gonna run Senna ADC instead of running it as the as the starving Senna? I mean, it it could it could be possible. It could be possible. And what are you thinking? Or on a support or something? Maybe. Right, we're gonna see how this goes. We we banned out their Jarvan last time. We were talking about how good the Kill in Heaven uh, Austin College of Jungler is on this champion. Um, mm -hmm. Now we're gonna get to see that in action. We're going to see if Miz is going to be able to answer that power that he has on Jarvan with Xin Zhao. Um, Miz was able to start out last game with the objective control that, that he likes to do when he focuses that in the jungle. Um, but they quickly turn that around on him. We're going to see if he's able to maintain control of the objectives um, throughout this game. It should be a lot easier now that we have the Cho'Gath. Uh, Cho'Gath with the Feast on his ultimate that uh, 1400 true damage that can come out on objectives makes for a incredibly strong smite for whichever team has that there that in combination with the jungler's smite yes. having that we'll in the see. bot lane last game was another reason that 
Um, Austin College was able to get so much pressure and so much agency over the Dragon Pit once it came to mid-game. Actually, now that I think about it, um, I guess it has to be Silas Top, right? Uh, considering that we're playing it. Could it be a set bot? You think it's going to be a set Senna in I bot think, lane I with a Silas Top and an Oriana mid? I think it could be. <laughs> I think it could be possible. I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to deny it just cuz I've seen some weirder things, but I mean, if I'm correct, we have the players positioned in a way where it shows their roles. And I think you're right, yeah. And it could, it could I don't know. You seem like you're you're a little bit flustered now that you nah, know that it's going to be a, a set support. This is gonna be a this this is gonna be it's gonna be a good game. This is I'm excited for this. This but, is a must win for TSU here if they want to continue in the Chogath Cup in the the not the Chogath Cup the Timo Cup next week. Um, they cannot let Austin College take another one here. About the three minute delay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've got to say I'm, I'm really excited for both teams here. Um, interesting bot lane is what it seems like um, on both teams actually, because I've never seen Pow Pow or Cas Cas play either of those characters. I think I might have seen her play Nami once, but definitely not when they're both playing them together. Um, they're definitely not their main characters, but they have played both of them before. For sure, for sure. I think they probably do both have Mastery 7 on those characters. Um, as far as the team comps go, I don't think that TSU can afford to let this go late. Yes, they do have the scaling Cho'Gath, but since it's going to be a Silas top on the enemy team, they're going to be scaling just as fast with those V-Stacks. Going to be able to take that every time it comes up. Silas can take advantage too, gain 300 max HP every time that he gets to use that ultimate. Mm -hmm. um, actually, that leads into my question, actually. What do you think about the Silas and Shogak mat matchup, if that's I, what's happening? I think that is heavily Silas favored. Um, definitely going to have to play really really defensive on the Shogak, but uh, I, I do think that is heavily a Silas favored matchup, if you're going to see between those two. Um Definitely going to have TP on both of those. I think that really DeCizzi's only option here is going to be to play safe, scale, try to impact fights in, in, in bot lane. Um, it's really going to be TSU has to focus that Lucian, Nami, get them ahead. And like I said, they I don't think they can afford to let this go late. I think they need to snowball with that Ari, Lucian, Nami, Zin Zhao, um, get a massive lead, and then close out the game. Take us into a game three. Is definitely what we need to see here. 50 more seconds left until we get into the game. I'm expecting uh, really good things. Really good things. Uh, TCU has to come out on top here. I believe in them. Um, I believe we're going to bounce back and we're going to come out stronger in this game. Yeah, I honestly I was not expecting the the fasting center, starving center bot lane going into these games today. Uh, when I was looking at everything, my predictions were actually that they were going to go with a Zyra Khan bot lane, something powerful like that. Their support, which is Zeltic, has been playing a lot of Rakan these last couple weeks. Um, they do have Cyprian has played quite a bit of Zaya in the past, so I'm gonna I, that that was my prediction coming in. Um, pleasantly surprised. By by the Shogath Senna and then the, the Set Senna here. Um, just because it's so unique, so different, not something we usually get to see. Um, it wasn't necessarily that Starving Senna mm -hmm. bot lane that, that had the the power last game. Um, Going to see what they're able to do with it this game. And if TSU takes them to a, to a game three, will they pick it again? That's... Kind of the question that's on my mind here.
That Senna really is a late game insurance option for them. It's possible that they could meet back here in bot lane again. Both teams are pinging. Very interesting here. So this could turn out bad for TSU. Looking for a looking for an invade. They're actually Super predicting risky. it. They're waiting in the bush here for them. They see them. Turns around. First blood First on Lucian. Lucian. <laughs> Sniffed it out, but it still wasn't enough. Flash is Flashed coming it out. all around. Pow Pow still alive. Gonna get taken down. Nami was taken down. Oh, the disaster. We got first blood on Lucian, but we might end up with a full team ace here. Tries to take Jarvan with him before he goes, but that is a one for five. Absolute disaster for the side of TSU here. A big risky play. I'm guessing they didn't want to risk any putting any wards in the bush right here. Um, I'm actually surprised nobody uh, put a ward there. Oriana go ahead and on. goes ahead and uses that TP. You want to go ahead and press O so we can get the yeah. I thought we can get everything up. We can see what they purchased. So two kills to Oriana, one to Jarvan, and two to the Senna. So it's gonna be a double long sword purchased for the Senna. He's gonna have so much power early game in bot lane, which is. Not what TSE wants, since we're really trying to snowball early with that Lucian Nami. Yeah, on top of that, um, the uh, top lane, uh, Silas here, has gotten four assists, which means he's going to be even stronger against this lane matchup as he is being aggressive right now. He isn't able to purchase anything early, but yeah, he's really going to be able to, to bully the... The Chogaf out there. A lot of damage coming over to Pow Pow's Lucian. For sure, for sure. Set pulling in and at least punching him twice and then uh, yeah, well. Senna doing a full combo on him. One really rough thing about this right here is the the range difference. Lucian has a lot of burst whenever Nami E's him and he goes in with his empowered autos and his Q. Um, but Senna has much, much more superior range. Looks like looks Miz like... is going to look for a lane gank here. Mm -hmm. They don't have this warded. They don't know he's here. They could potentially try to bait the set to go in. Be a good play here. We'll say don't you forget that Austin Jarvan. College is Jarvan is around bot lane too. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Miz looking to recall. They, they bait it. Goes in. Good play yeah. by TSU here. Yeah, we get both of them. One over to Lucian, one over to Nami, unfortunately. Jarvan's just going to keep clearing his camps. We got a TP off and set down there. The C is playing this passively. Wants the wave to be sitting right in this position that it is right now. That it is going gonna, is gonna to be pushing back out towards Silas. So I was just going to sit in this bush, just daring the seas to walk up. They have something here in mid lane. No, he's just going to cross. In an attempt to get the scuttle crab. They could me here, both junglers. Yeah, I think that Jarvan's going to have it done before Zin Zhao can get there. I'm actually, I'm actually super interested on what uh, set support here is going to buy. We have a little bit of action in jungle side here. What well, is technically set ADC. The spectral... Oh, is it? Yeah, Senna does have the spectral sickle, the support item. It's And set is getting all the CS. It's just that mm -hmm. you want all the kills over to Senna. That's the way this lane works. Interesting. You basically just try to have someone peel for Senna while she does the damage. She collects her souls while the other person farms. Because she does get eight gold off of each soul as part of it. Interesting. Being a little aggressive here. Jarvan did take some of Jin's uh, top camps up there, so Sin is starved a little bit. But nothing he can't come back from. Hot lane looking to get some wards into the 
bot side jungle of Austin College, not wanting to get caught out here by the Jarvan. Pow Pow being poke, really poke. aggressive, a lot of poke over set, gets the E. Big W damage, exhaust on the Senna, she goes down. Yes. Double kill one, over to Lucian. It's one problem with set uh, being in any lane at this low level and with little items. Sets W just isn't going to do enough damage at this point. Um, doesn't mean it won't do it later, but at the moment, um, it's just not enough. Yeah, Miz going ahead, following following their strategy, their playstyle that we talk about a lot, um, trying to secure these objectives. Sees the double kill bot lane, instant dragon. Yes. Just ready to do that objective right away, taking that taking that off the map. Go ahead yes. and get a recall from TSU's bot lane. We were worried whenever the the Senna got the double kill, had the the double longsword start that uh, it was gonna it was gonna hurt our bot lane here since we're looking for the early snowball angle. But we were able to flip it back around. We now have four kills over to Lucian, 250 gold bounty on him. He has his essence reaver completed. It's a lot of damage. Practically infinite mana with the essence reaver. Interesting mm -hmm. item there. Okay, now we do have. Level six on both the top and mid laners. Pull in by set here. Gonna see if we can poke him out. Jarvan is here. Good W by set. Hard as Jarvan. Jarvan does get the shutdown. They could try to tower dive here. I'd be surprised if they do. Shin does have a, long, a lot of shield. Spirit Rush coming in from Ari. Valord really looking to try to lock down the Senna. Gets zoned out by the set. Massive W damage. Senna almost Ooh. gets him, but he makes it out. Senna goes That's down. Coming back in with those resets on the Spirit Rush. Trying to poke them back some. Does get a lot of damage off on the Jarvan. Just going to collect this wave. Around. Jarvan spotted out on Vision. Has the EQ out. Here, uh, Denise doing uh, his best to really try not to feed um, the Silas here. He's so far down in CS, but... Oh, Valor potentially getting picked. Does get caught out. Playing really aggressively on the Jarvan. Mm -hmm. Gonna take away these chickens now, too. I don't think that there's any way that Miz can contest this. That's for sure. Gonna have to give up their camps. I do manage to get a plate mid lane for the side of Austin College. Doing a lot of damage to disease here, unfortunately. He's tanky, but he ain't tanky enough. He's looking to do a gank here. Doesn't go to Rift to see if anybody's on it, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think he can contest at the moment. He's still level 5. Needs that level 6 before he can stand a chance of fighting Jarvan. It Jarvan's been level 6, is about to have their ultimate back up again. They do have the help from Oriana, who is also 3-0. and oh, Some action. Bot lane just happened. One over to Lucian, one over to Nami. Gonna try to collect some plates while they know the jungler is topside. Sure. At some point... Um, TSU is really going to want to get this this shutdown from Jarvan and Oriana on solution. TP from set to stop him uh, from getting his tower. We have lost chapter for both Ari and Oriana at the moment. Oriana was able to get the the tier right after that initial skirmish with the ace. Already has that stacking. Last from Chogoth. Yeah. Silas did take the feast. Probably gonna use it to ultimate minion here since there's no way he's gonna get a get a champion kill with them backing out. The Lord looking battle. bot lane again. Spirit rush. 
Gets the Senna solo, isn't able to stop them. Jarvan, perfect timing with the counter gank bot lane. Looks like they're going to look to drop Harold down here too. We got Oriana here. Austin College's jungler really understanding how important it is to keep the Lucian Nami from snowballing this game. That's what TSE wants to do. Trying to apply as much pressure as possible. Harold's not going to take the turn. Cast cast with a good bubble. Miz pops the the Crescent Strike from the the Zinzao ult. Does seem like uh, Silas did take Zin's blue. Fortunately, have some action back here in Bot River. Fortunately, Kapow going a little deep gets flashed on by Set. Picked. There's no way we're gonna be able to contest this dragon anymore. TSU's jungler got really low off of that. Actually, at this point, Set is becoming insanely strong. It's gonna be really hard to uh, uh, counter him here. I will say though, as long as we dodge his W. Um, be all good, but like, it is harder said than done. Especially in team fights, Valor could get picked off here by the whole team coming up. Doesn't have Spirit Rush available. Oh, it does actually. Low cooldown. Uses all three Nerf. charges to get away. Nerf the champ. The C is actually with a solo kill up here onto the onto the Silas. Gets the feast stack off of him as well. Pings out that Silas flashed. Definitely looking to do as much tower as we can. We do have the the tidal wave available at the moment. Lucian ult ready to. I'm gonna take this time to clear vision in the river. Get some vision down of their own. Get rid of this plant. They want to make something happen, but they really don't want to get caught out by the Jarvan again whenever they do. Sure Miz like walking her. up for a lane gank here. Cast mm -hmm. cast sweeping the bush, making sure it doesn't get spotted out early. It does look like the Austin College's mid laner is walking down. Jarvan coming down too. They definitely suspect this, this is happening, even without vision. There's the tidal wave. Hold from set to get away. Gets taken down. Jarvan here. Ooh, really good charm Ooh. from Ari. A really good rotate from Valor here to make sure that Orianna doesn't do anything more. Really playing in their face here. Jarvan goes back in, drops the ultimate. Might take Valor. Nope, takes out Ari. This is just the strength of a 5-0. and oh. Jarvan has Gore Drinker already. Yes. We actually have four yes. out of five Mythics purchased already for the side of Austin College. Yes, and unfortunately, Ari leaving mid lane, uh, Silas did just end up rotating downward to still hold that pressure. We have... Uh, Jogath is beating on the top turret. We have, uh, Not going to be able to get the turret, though. Yeah, sure, sure. Silas and Oriana rotating to him. RATP mid. Valor and the Ari, the only one for the side of TSU with a mythic item so far. Decided to go with the Everfrost this time. Should be good to try to peel the Silas and the Jarvan off of them. Silas looking bot, knows they're on a ward, clears it. Next dragon, not up for two more minutes. Looking to get this bot tier one though. Pow Pow might get picked. Oh, good dodge from Pow Pow. There's the tidal wave, doesn't get anyone. 
stops the shutdown from the Jarvan. You know, Zoomies. that tidal wave didn't end up getting anybody, but it was a good tidal wave nonetheless that made it so uh, Jarvan was trapped. Yes, it, it did separate him from the rest of their team. Silas takes the Zinzao ult, uses it to separate the team. More shenanigans with the mastery flashes. Ends up it's just trading to... one for one in the NTSU support for yes, yes. the jungler of Austin College. It's Currently about to, a 4k uh... gold differential. Go on. It's tough to fight against a set in jungles just because his W takes up a wide range of that jungle. So it's... You just have to fight him in like more of an open area, maybe. Very true. Okay, so Harold is currently up. And third dragon of the game is spawning in about 35 seconds. It does look like it's going to be a Chemtech soul this game. Tenacity and a regening shield. Oh, Valor gets picked. Good Senna W landed. Looks like they're going to attempt to take two objectives here uh, with her Jin going back. Yeah, Silas did take the, the feast. Was going to use that on the Herald. Besides, instead to go top lane and clear the wave. Chogath like actually stays. Okay. Zinzao looking here for... It's a flash used by Chogath. They don't end up getting Silas. Cast Cast going to go down to Jarvan. It's a double kill. Takes out Pao Pao Tzu. This is definitely what I was afraid of when when giving them the Jarvan. That's why I was saying at the beginning of the day that I just really predicted this should be pick or ban um, for the Not side of shame. TSU. Forming just as well on Jarv on the character as we expected they would. Currently 7 1 and 7. And teleport coming from Ariana here. Valord being kind of cheeky. Staying up, trying to. daring them to go after. Outside not the Another Easy. solo kill for Disease in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Actually, a great showing by him today. Is that, is that three solo kills in top lane today so far? I think Two so. Two on the Silas here, and then one on the, the Jace tower dive in the first game. Valord, Spirit Rush, all charges used. Nami bubble, huge. Jarvan shut down over to the Ari. See what TSU is going to convert this into. Harold's still up. Baron not spawning for a minute and a half. I I would think that Mizra is going to look for that Herald right now. This objective focused playstyle. Yep. It is what he's doing. The C is going up. Pings that his feast just has a, about five seconds remaining on the cooldown, so he will get another stack off of this Herald. Looks like the Silas is going down to check the pit. Doesn't make it in time. Shogath eats the Herald. Still just about a 4k gold differential here. Um, the advantage is to Austin College right now. However, I do not think that um, Texan Esports is by any means outside out of this game. No, for sure, for sure. Keeping They're mid lane shoved. Ooh, a TP here. They're looking for a fight. Miz wants this. Backs out. EQ in from Jarvan. Really aggressive. Charm lands. Everfrost. Tidal wave comes out. Absolutely shutting down that Jarvan. Giving them no chance to move. Another huge charm from Valord. Follow it up with the Q. Good CC chain. That's another taken down. Herald drop. They're going to get mid tower here, potentially looking for more. Third charm goes wide. 
Silas coming in aggressively. Took the Spirit Rush. That is so many dashes right now. TSU trying to run them down in their jungle here. Little Pow Pow E's forward aggressively. Doesn't get anything. Goes for a second tower. Massive gold swing. Oh, they're Base turning like on to the Silas. It. Get the knock up. Senna ult comes out. Valord on a rampage. We Section do lose line. Mizra and Valord, but we managed to take down the Jarvan once more and get the, the Silas. I, I will say that they really did recover from this those team fights here. They are actually completely back in the game here now. That 4k gold lead has dropped to less than 1k now. The game is back in an even state and actually looking to be in TSU's favor. We have a TP coming in. They might actually catch them on their resets here. Shogath ult taken. Silas misses the chains. They're going to go ahead and baiting. start up the Baron. Bip, bip. Decide not to go for it. Jarvan pinging this mid wave. This top wave needs to be taken care of. Despite the early game domination by Austin College, we actually do have the kill advantage now, too. We're up by one kill, 22 to 21. Mm -hmm. They look like they might meet here in Bot River. Could be possible. Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. Yes. TSU not wanting to give soul pressure over to Austin. Silas looking down for that flake angle in the in the bot side jungle of TSU. Might be a little too far away here. Hasn't been spotted on vision yet. They do not know that he's behind them. Yes, this could be a really good play for Silas here. TSU gonna start up the dragon, trying to burst it down as quick as possible. They do have feast available. It's a big smite. Cyprian gets cast cast. We do secure the dragon. Senna ulti. We get the dragon, but at what cost? That is an Unfold. ace over to the Unfold. side of Austin College, and they are going to convert this into a Baron instantly. So unfortunately, uh, Silas did end up grabbing the Nami ult there, uh, making a big CC chain uh, for that entire fight against TSU. Really well played by the Silas, finding that flank angle, getting that ultimate to really turn the fight around. They're going to get the Baron. Silas shoving bot wave, Oriana catching the mid waves. Silas not going to be able to finish off the bot turret. Austin College does take the top turret, though. That fight does have a... Did cause a gold swing back into the favor of Austin College again. Now they have a 6k gold lead. And we really do have to look at where this gold is centralized. They have a lot of it currently on um, Jarvan, who's now hit three items. For sure, for sure. It could be a. Uh, it could be tough. I. Uh, I think all of our CC has to go to Jarvan. He's definitely their strongest. Silas Rod of Ages only a minute away, a minute away yep. from being fully stacked. That's going to give him that extra level. He is a level behind the seas at the moment. with the stride breaker and the sterics 
Definitely going to give him that tankiness on the front line. TSU looking to run down Silas here. Kao Kao Guild Force here. is in. They almost get him. Tidal Wave secures it. Jarvan, however, with the big ultimate. Lots of damage coming out. Sets here. Senna ultimate. Oriana with the double. Triple on Oriana. The seize the last one left alive. They are just going to group and siege bot lane now. After that one for four trade, I don't think Cho'Gath is going to be able to stop their, stop them from sieging this. They're going to go all the way for the inhib. I do not think they can look to end here, however. It might be an overstay if they decide to stand here any longer. All of TSU respawning. Silas pinging the objectives saying, hey, we need to back off here. We need to play safe. Let's not throw our lead that we just generated. Let's wait and secure this next drag. Let's get this next Baron and then look for the end. Mm -hmm. Jarvan has recalled TSU looking for some. Spirit Rush, Everfrost, the Charm lands. That is a shutdown on Pow Pow's Lucian. Getting that 850 gold from Oriana. Looking for more here. Ulti used. Silas just barely makes it out. In the jungle here. Jarvan's rejoined the fight. Nami does a really good job of locking down Jarvan here. Will it be enough? They don't have Lucian. All the knockups from the Cho'Gath and the Xin Zhao combo. Silas rejoins the fight. Do we manage to take them all down? It'd be possible. Silas is still I will... here. He took the Xin Zhao ult, used it to knock them away. Yeah, it could be possible. I'm. I'm I don't I know if they say... should keep chasing here. Yeah, I will say that I'm really surprised on how Kaz Kaz played there. Uh, being behind the wall there, as well as like still bringing in the CC to kill Jarvan in the red pit. Um... Oriana TP'd down there in case they decided to continue chasing Silas. They do back out. Miz gonna start up this dragon again. Like I said, he really likes to, to tunnel in on these objectives. Yes. And this could be a very Silas good objective. Takes the feast. He wants to steal it. He does. Seize goes down. Maw giving Jarvan just enough sustain to stay alive with that shield. Austin College's top laner just playing so well with these last two games. Even though he got behind early, the Deceased was doing a good job of pressuring them up there. He's just playing these team fights immaculately, finding good flank angles, taking the right ultimates. Valor trying to stall them out, trying to get away with the Spirit Rush, eventually gets caught. Austin College might try to look for the end here. I don't know if it's possible. Most of TSU respawning. Mid T2 falls. Baron's up in 15 seconds. I'm expecting them maybe just to try to get this mid inhib and then rotate to Baron. Looks like they're going to wait in this bush, see if they can they pick somebody off. Really cheeky here. Set pulls in the Cho'Gath. Ults him over the wall. Interesting choice. Does a ton of damage with the W. Lucian ult comes out. 
Jarvin with the takedown onto Xin Zhao. Silas running through this fight. You can see how big Silas is right now from all the <laughs> yeah. peace, from all from all the peace stacks he's gained. Silas does go down. Little Pow Pow does a good job of surviving that fight. If um, Austin College had managed to take down Pow Pow, the game might have been over here. Oh, Valor does get picked. Now they might actually look to end. Pow Pow looking for one final hero play goes in. Unfortunately, not enough. Set Haymaker. Picks him down, and it looks like this is going to be the end of the end of the game, end of the series. GG's to Austin College. Well played to both teams. It was honestly a really exciting game to watch. Unfortunately, however, Austin College does take this game 2-0. And that is going to be the end of the, the Teemo Cup for Texan Esports. I mean, it was it was a tough game. It was it was really hard. We could, we started out a little slow, um, but we came back uh, stronger. Um, and then uh, a few misplays here and there. But uh, honestly, I don't think anybody on our team really played horribly. It's just, no, I, uh, honestly, there was so much great things that happened here from both teams. So many highlight, real worthy moments on on both sides. Literally everybody on both team can pull clips for, from from those games that just happened. Honestly, sure, spectacular sure. play here. The games were so exciting to watch. Um, it's I mean it's tough. It's tough. Um, but our, our uh, TCU really fought really hard. Um, for sure, one hundred percent. And honestly, I have to say that. Uh, the jungler in the top laner from Austin College absolutely just dominated today. They played so well. Um, loved getting to see them. Love getting to see them in the games today. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts here for us today? I mean, I don't got much. All I know is that seeing my, my team play makes me want to play the league, honestly. So, honestly, I might just do that. Uh, after this stream ends here. Um, I think that that is a great idea, and I will follow suit. Um, everyone that was here watching today, thank you for your support. Thank you for joining us and watching uh, the Teemo Cup that's good, that went on today. Um, good game to everyone at Austin College, everyone here with the Texan Esports team, and uh, everyone have a great rest of your day. Can't wait to see yes. you the next time that we play in the tournament.